Hello there. This is a nice quick video to show how the buffer settings affect the latency, which is the amount of delay that you get between the time that you say something, and this is my mic input, and the time that I hear it out of my headphones in this case. So I'm going to do a little demo by actually sending the signal through the virtual cable back into the system so you can actually hear the difference in the delay. Of course, you won't hear it as echo except in your headphones because you hear your voice first and then hear the delayed playback into your headphones. But I'm going to show you how the buffer settings for the A1 device affect all of them. Okay? So let's go ahead and, and send, send it to, it to itself. itself. And, and now, now you're, you're hearing, hearing the echo. echo. Okay, okay, so, so this, this is in, in here. here. And the, and the system, system settings. settings. This, this is the, the default. default. Right, right now, now I've got, got set, set to the MME, MME which, which is a. Uh, the, the, it, it comes, comes with, with it's set, set at, at 1024 1, 1, 1, already. So let's, so let's go, go ahead and set, set it any worse. worse. Here's. Here's And now uh, 480. See the, the difference? difference? That's, That's just about, about tolerable. Okay, okay let's, let's close this down and let's, let's select the same, same headset, headset but uh, as KS. KS. Okay, okay, so now I select it as the KS, KS device. device. Go back, back into the system, system settings. settings. And we'll change the buffering for the KS below 512. And I'll set it all the way down to 128. Okay, now you see, it's almost immediate. It's a little bit of a slap back. Still uh, a little bit confusing. And of course, you're hearing both together. But the point I want to make is that uh, this is the way the delay you would hear in a headset would be. So, so you, you hear your voice, you say something, and you hear it with a little, little bit of a delay. Now mind, mind you, setting it this low, your, your equipment, your hardware may not be capable of going this low. Okay, let's, let's try a WDM. It will be the same kind of thing. Okay, so now, now remember, I have this at 512, the default, default settings that it comes with. with. Drop, Drop this, this down, down to 128 again. again. Ah, did, did you see that? And you hear this crackling noise? That's what happens when you go too low for the system. So KS is, well, let's go. There you go. Still not too good. Let's try higher. And there, now, now we're at a tolerable level for the WDM. We're not getting that digital noise. The buffers aren't running out. So you see, KS is slightly lower level than WDM. At least I'm capable of doing it at a 128 without getting the distortions. Now, I still may get some clicking. You've got to record for a while to see if you start getting clickings or distortions. Go, go back, back to, to the KS. KS. Okay, so this. Oh, uh, restart. There we go. Oh, no, it's not allowing it this time. So. There we are. And uh, that's, that's okay. okay. So that's so that's, that's more stable. stable. And 224 is a little more stable. I'm still getting a robot sound. <laughs> so, uh, getting the idea that you can't just switch things around and not uh, run the risk of things getting out of sync. See what I'm saying? But once you find a stable spot, remember that. That's going to be your, your number that you can rely on. 
So, so I'm, I'm going, going to set, set that, that to that. that. We, we got, got the lowest, lowest I could go, go here, here was 480. 288 seems, seems to be the, the most reliable there. there. I'll, I'll try, try switching, switching again and see if it breaks. And it didn't, didn't break. break. So, so it's still, still a bit of delay, delay as you, you can see. see. Still, it's a lot better than the 512 or the 1024. Okay. So let's turn off that A. And there you have uh, just a straight sound again. Okay, now that's uh, that's how you set the buffer settings in order to do that. Remember, your A2 and A3 will uh, th their latency will be affected by that. You may, if you're trying to hear speakers and headset at the same time, you're going to get a little bit of delay. You can compensate for that over here by setting a delay amount for how long you want the A1, A2, A3 to to delay to compensate for the other outputs. But uh, but this is going to be establishing whatever device you've set for the A1 is going to establish what your ASIO and your other outputs latency is going to be. Okay? Or the, in other words, the delay, which we call latency. All right, well, I hope that's, that's uh, an understandable video and that you, you got the idea now of how to set latency. It, it, it kind of had me going for a bit, and especially since I was getting a lot of those distortions and I didn't know what was going on. So now you have a little bit better understanding of what the source of that could be. Also, sometimes just getting distortions, you can set this engine mode to swift, and sometimes that will solve some issues with delay or with dropouts. Uh, dropouts are particular I found that when other programs do things like accessing the CPU for checking oh, Windows update settings, for instance, which you might want to turn off during recordings, or uh, Google Drive or Dropbox, whenever any of these things grab hold of the CPU in order to check the web or to check your system, they tend to make a little audio dropouts. But sending it to Swift seems to really help uh, get rid of or at least lessen the effects of that kind of a thing. Okay, so there you have it. That's what this video was intended to show you. I hope it was helpful and please ask any questions in the comments. Take care.